So when I was a student, what I would do is just sit at my table, draw these drawings, and just try to get better. And I would think to myself, okay, I'm going to make the ultimate style, the ultimate character nobody's ever seen before, and it's going to be awesome. So I'm drawing, and I'm like, oh, I need to make the arm a little bit better, new piece of paper, start drawing again, and then, oh, it's almost there. I, I, I need to just try one more time and do another copy, another copy, another copy. But did I get anywhere? No, I didn't really get anywhere. I didn't find that awesome style. I didn't improve really. I was just practicing. And that happens to a lot of us, you know, where we're putting in the effort. But because we don't actually put in the effort into the right places, nothing really happens. So I used to just sit there and just go to myself, ah, I wish somebody could just tell me what to do to become an awesome, successful artist. And I will do it. I will do each one of these steps or each one of these points or whatever it might be. So in this video, what I want to do is tell you the seven most important things that have contributed to a successful career so far in my you know art career. Okay, so number one. Focus 90 minutes at a time. That is such a good tip because a lot of times we, you know, we live in this world where there's constant interruptions. There's constant checking of emails, self-imposed interruptions, posting something, checking back to that post, seeing if any of your friends liked it, seeing if you got any new followers, all sorts of stuff to disrupt our day. And a lot of times, every disruption that we have we have to ramp back up to get back to that high level way of thinking, way of drawing, way of just problem solving, whatever it might be. It takes a while to get back to your potential. And a lot of times, a lot of people, they will disrupt themselves you know, every 15 minutes checking something or another. We live in this kind of a world now. And if you section off your day in 90 minutes at a time, guaranteed you're gonna look at that 90 minutes and go, okay, yeah, I need to accomplish this and this and this and this. And it puts much more fire under your butt as opposed to, okay, I need to finish all these things in the entire day. Right. If you go 90 minutes at a time, you're gonna definitely notice the 90 minutes that where you've been slacking where you haven't been producing that much, things like that, and keeps you constantly trying to get to these mini goals of what you wanna do within that 90 minutes, and it keeps you concentrated in a way where there's no disruption, so you are getting to that top level, that high level of your potential of drawing or thinking or whatever it might be. The other great thing about this is 90 minutes, sometimes people go way over 90 minutes and they're going way too long. So it's a good idea to put everything down. Take a nice 15 minute break every 90 minutes. Get up, walk around, do something, and then you come back to your work and guess what? You're looking at it with fresh eyes. And a lot of times when you do this, you'll see where you went wrong, where you went right, and exactly what you wanna do next. Number two, practice as a result of learning. Okay, not just practicing, practicing, practicing. Every day I'm gonna practice how to paint your face. I'm going to look at the angles. I'm gonna you know, measure out things. I'm gonna measure out uh, proportions and darkness of tone and so on and so forth. That is good in a way because it'll make me a great copier. But if you're not really delving into exactly why is that tone that tone? Why is that angle that angle? And why does the line all of a sudden become sharp over here and that angle becomes soft over there? Those kind of questions will help you to start being able to think about creating something as opposed to copying something, right? Think about what it is you really wanna learn in terms of art or whatever it is that you're learning and model your thinking around that and try to learn those things. And as a result of trying to learn how to construct a person's arm, you start drawing a whole bunch of arms. That is exactly what I mean by practice as a result of learning. So you are learning and the outcome is that you have to do all these drawings and you know that is kind of like the result of you trying to learn. 
don't just practice there, sitting there, not with an absolute objective. Think about what are your weakest points and attack those. You know, get them strong because as those get stronger, they will only help those other stronger parts of your repertoire, your thinking. And the thing is, practice really does become an essential part of learning. You know, there's so many people out there that know things, that know the theory of things and all that stuff. But guess what? If you have knowledge and you don't know how to use it, you don't really have that knowledge. You're just a person that thinks you know everything but can't actually do it. Number three, embrace the routine. I used to hate routines, I used to hate schedules, because why? Because I wanted freedom, and I wanted to be able to do whatever I wanted to do. And that's exactly why I started my own studio and went independent, because I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. But guess what? I found that you can't really do what you want to do, you can't really get that freedom unless you have that time to do the things that you want to do. And the best way to get that time in your life is to have a great routine, is to have a great schedule. That way you can get everything you want to get done and still have time to do the things that you want to do. It's going to create momentum as well. You know, even if it's just a little bit every so often, as long as it's consistent, there will be momentum. I did subway sketching, for example, for five years of my life. Every Sunday, I would meet at Union Station in the subways of Toronto and just sketch people and invite people to come out and sketch with me. The sketch group still runs today. Definitely check it out if you're in Toronto. But I used to do that for five years straight every Sunday, no matter if it was New Year's Eve, my birthday, you know, whatever it might be, I scheduled everything around it so it was super consistent. That was the most consistent thing in my life and through that process, even though it was just one time a week, I became much more knowledgeable about drapery, about clothes, about people and how to draw them and how to capture their essence it became so much easier to me because I had this consistency in my learning, in my practicing. For yourself, start off with something simple. Think about something that you know would be great for you but you aren't doing as much of right now and schedule out a tiny, tiny sliver of time to go and do that at a certain time, certain day, whatever it might be, keep it consistent. And as you get used to it, something real simple so that you can get used to it very easily, as you get used to it, you can build on top of it. You can add a little bit more. You can add a little bit more after that and so on and so forth until you build a really great routine that will help you to reach your potential. Not only that, but as a result of it, you'll have a lot more time and a lot more freedom. Number four, cultivate a love for what you do. You know, there's this phrase that I really don't like so much, which is, uh, find your passion. You don't really find your passion. You know, somebody that's really passionate about search engine optimization was never really passionate about search engine optimization as a child. As a 10-year-old child, you couldn't look at this person and go, Wow, that person, when that person grows up, is gonna, that person's gonna be a great search engine optimizer. We have to cultivate our love of things. And a lot of times what happens is we cultivate that love of things when we're young and therefore we get a lot more time into it, we put a lot more passion and effort into it and we become better at a younger age and then everybody looks at that person and goes, wow, that person's so talented. But you know what? It's because they have been cultivating that love of whatever it is they want to do. And I definitely remember this point in my college days where I was looking at all these other artists and I was thinking to myself, wow, you know, some artists get so obsessed about their art, about their passion, that they get too obsessed and they get crazy. You know, I don't want that. I'm scared of that. I don't want to get too crazy about art. Well, don't worry because it doesn't happen like this. Embrace it. Love what you do. Get really passionate about your art, about your craft. And guess what? 
it will build slowly. You will not get to this obsessive point instantly. You can stop and slow down at any time if you start to get too obsessed. So feel free to absolutely dive right in. That's exactly what I did. Dove right in and really embraced and tried to cultivate that love of art before I actually became super passionate about it. And just like any relationship, you need to put in effort to make it work and make it long lasting. A lot of times we end up just kind of getting infatuated with something, get obsessed about something for a few months and that's it. We got to take care of that love of what we want to do or whatever kind of relationship we're talking about here. We need to constantly water the plant of love or whatever it is, our passion to make it grow healthy. Right, so constantly try to love what it is that you do. Find that sliver of whatever it is that you really love about that thing that you're painting or drawing and get into it, try to expand it and try to live in that sliver and really just love what you do. Number five, build a network of like-minded people. This is something that I am very grateful that I just kind of did naturally because I've always been very curious about people and their stories, especially about people that I totally aspire to or I totally look up to. So a lot of times when I had the opportunity to meet a great artist or whatever that might be, I would totally go and I would go and meet them. A lot of times I was very shy about this. I was very nervous about this. As you know, an, a typical artist, I was somewhat introverted. So you have to take that little slice of you, again, that is like uh, not shy. Think about those times where you're not shy. Who are you with? Where are you? That kind of thing. You know, what does it smell like in this not shy environment? And try to expand that vision, expand that part of you and go up to these people and just try to strike a conversation with them in a very natural way. Try to find that slice of you that is natural and unshy in those moments and try to apply them to these other moments where you might be shy and it'll help. The other thing is, is that I also just like to meet regular, you know, people that I never heard of and things like that. I like to meet them just as much, you know, not just because I'm interested in their stories and things like that. And a lot of times it's amazing the kind of stories people will tell me. And it's been wonderful like that. And it really is encouraging for me to meet other people and hear their stories. But let me just plant this little seed in your head, okay? You might meet a person that you don't know and this person is just starting off in art or whatever it might be, or maybe not even an artist, is an accountant, is a you know colonoscopist or whatever they might do. And you might not see any connection between what it is that you do and what they do. So why should you bother to meet them? Well, what if they know somebody in the business or they know somebody that knows somebody in that business? So not only would you miss out on meeting that one person, you're also missing out on every person that that person knows and perhaps would introduce you to in the future. So every person that you think about meeting that you don't actually meet, you're probably missing out on 20 different people that you could have met just by starting off by meeting that one person. So take the opportunity to go and meet these people. Who knows where it's gonna lead you to online, in person. Anytime that you think about talking to somebody or giving them a little comment, just go and do it. Who knows where it's gonna lead you. Number six, comfort is life's trap. I love challenges. I constantly will challenge myself. That is something that is absolutely necessary to keep going in this world. Look at technology 10 years ago. Look at movies 10 years ago, video games 10 years ago. It's constantly improving. And if we are not constantly improving is the moment we start falling behind. And this is something that I've seen with a lot of new professionals. If you're a new professional, if you're a student, if you're even a veteran for 10 years, if you find yourself slowing down, this is especially for you. Pick up the pieces. You got to get back on that horse because if you don't, you might not feel it now. You might not feel it four years from now, 
But guess what? You will definitely feel it 10 years from now when life has just evolved right past you and now you are way behind. And by that time, it gets much harder to catch back up. So constantly challenge yourself, constantly give you yourself new challenges to go after because that's how we will stretch the brain, stretch our minds, stretch our potentials and that's the only way we can get to our potential is by constantly challenging ourselves. Every great person has to go through a lot of challenges. That's just how life works. A lot of us look up to these people because they went through all these challenges. But guess what? This is how you pass life's test when it challenges you or gives you this failure right in your face. You got to stare it straight in the eye, embrace it, put a big smile on your face, be positive about it, accept this challenge, accept this failure, whatever it might be, stand back up and keep going in a very positive way. Once life really understands that, hey, Bobby is not stopping, even though we threw a bunch of bricks in his face, gave him a big failure, he's not stopping. He's still coming through and he's coming through with a big smile on his face. So you know what? He kind of creeps me out. Let's open the doors, let him in because he's not going to stop. Failure and challenges don't stop this guy. So let's move out of the way. That's exactly what happens. And we are constantly tested like this throughout our lives. You might think, that sounds like a bunch of BS. Who knows if it is? Who knows You know what's true or not? That's what I believe. And because I believe that, I act like that. And when I act positive in the face of challenges or setbacks, my outcome is completely different. What I end up producing, what I end up doing, what I end up drawing, whatever it might be, would be completely different than if I was sulking, if I was sad, if I was in a bad mood after experiencing this big challenge. I might stop a lot of times as well, you know, and just end up sulking and doing something else. So it works because you believe in it. Okay, so stay positive, especially through the tough parts of your life. Number seven, exercise your willpower. As babies, we are born into this world with zero willpower. It's completely instinctive and we are just doing whatever we're doing and we have to be taught willpower. We need to be taught how to resist things, how to keep going when you don't want to and things like that. It's not something that will automatically grow within us. As we get older, all of a sudden we have more willpower. No, it doesn't really work like that. I'm sure all of us can think of adults that still have bad willpower on certain things. These are things that we need to exercise. And that's the great thing about willpower is that however much willpower you have right now doesn't determine how much willpower you'll have later. This is something that you develop, that you exercise. And as you exercise it, you will have more willpower. Try to exercise in a way where you are pushing the right amount of weights. You know, you don't want to have from zero to hundred. So you're going from absolutely not resisting anything to being super dedicated and being on this crazy regiment that nobody can handle. You know, you want to give yourself the proper challenges, perhaps a smaller challenge in the beginning and build upon that to have greater and greater challenges on your willpower to strengthen them more and more. Okay, think of it as weights almost. Pick the right weight. Now, a lot of times when you are really developing your willpower, it's also important to know that your willpower depletes throughout the day. If you have to make constant decisions and you're not actually exercising your muscles, exercising your body, you know what? We still get tired. We still get tired just from thinking, just from listening, just from absorbing information. It gets us mentally tired and when we're mentally tired, our willpower goes down. So a lot of times what I like to do is before the end of my day, towards the afternoon or towards the night, I will reset my to-do list. I'll reset my routine for the next day. I'll determine the things that I want to do tomorrow, now, so that when I wake up in the morning, I can just look at my list, not even have to tap into my willpower. I could just look at my list and go, okay, this is what I need to do first. This is what I need to do second. This is what I need to do third. It's already predetermined. 
Okay, that way you'll have a bit more mental power throughout the day so you can stay nice and dedicated, disciplined, enthusiastic and all that good stuff. If you like my videos and they really seem to connect with you, I highly recommend you check out schoolism.com because this is a site that I founded over 10 years ago and for 10 years I've been gathering the best, the brightest minds in our industry and asking them to, to teach the world, to teach us, to teach me. You know, I take the assignments, I take the classes, I do them all in order for me to improve as well. And much of the success that I've achieved thus far has been highly attributed to all the stuff that I've been learning from all these other great artists. For this very limited time, within 24 hours of when I release this video, if you share this video, and you hashtag it schoolism tips and you share it on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Not only are you helping to support what I'm trying to do, which is to spread the great knowledge out there, but I will pick one of you and give one of you out there a free one year subscription to schoolism where you can learn for free. And not only that, if at any time you want to change your course that you've selected on schoolism, Anytime throughout your whole entire subscription, you can switch courses for just $1 and you could do that over and over again and just try to absorb as much as you can throughout your subscription. Creating opportunities over the internet. This is something I know a lot about. This is how we started our studio in Toronto, Canada and maybe only 1% of the clients or business that we get is from Toronto, Canada. So pretty much everything else is through the internet. So I want to share with you